Uh, to solder your practice ring, you're going to need a few things. One, you're going to need some copper tongs. You're going to need uh, flux, what we call a solder pick, a brush for the flux, a soldering brick. This is where we do all of our soldering on. And then, obviously, the solder, a torch lighter, and a torch. Step number one, you need to cover where you're going to be soldering with flux. And a couple things about soldering. Solder will not flow where the metal is dirty. So if the metal is oxidized, uh, you'd want to sand this first, you'd want to clean it up, you'd want to get clean, uh, bare metal. Uh, two, when you heat anything, uh, or any kind of metal like this, it's going to oxidize. And what that means is it's going to tarnish. What flux does is it actually absorbs the oxygen and stops it from oxidizing. So this will help keep the metal clean while we're soldering it. You don't need to paint the whole ring, you just need to paint on either side of the seam. I usually go about a half inch. And you can put too much on. If you glop it on like that, it's going to boil, it's going to knock your solder chip off. And the other thing is, is it actually will uh, crystallize and it ends up uh, becoming almost like a glass coating. And it's really hard to get it off your metal. But just getting some like shine. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. So again, this is way too uh, thick. You want to just spread out a little bit over the top. And if you let this dry, it'll actually dry to like a white powder. And it's fine if it gets to that point. Uh, you know, you haven't missed uh, the window that you can use it. The solder pick, we're going to use this to help kind of control the metal. Now this right now is pretty dirty, so I'm going to end up cleaning this off before I, end up, I use it, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Uh, this, these are steel, and they don't conduct heat all that well, so you can hold it down like this. A lot of people try to hold their solder pick here. Well, you know, any, any kind of shake that you have gets telegraphed and gets really bad by the time you're down here. So it's actually a lot easier just to hold it like this like you would a pencil. And I'm going to use this to place my solder chip. So what I do is I dip the tip of the solder pick in the flux. And the solder, we cut these into little chips and we'll put them into these containers for you. And a lot of students end up wanting to use way too much solder. That little chip right there is more than enough for this seam. So what I'll do is I'll take the solder pick and I'll bridge the seam with that solder chip. Solder will flow to the hottest part. So if as I'm soldering this, as I'm heating this up, uh, all my solder flows to one side, what that means is, is that this side was hotter than this side. Uh, you can't stop right in the middle and try to fix that. What you need to do is just move the torch over and get the other side hotter to try and pull that solder over. And we can also use the solder pick to kind of push it over. So uh, you have to kind of get uh, experience with controlling the heat. Um, and the other thing is then is recognizing where the hottest part of the flame is. And we'll talk about that once we solder. So I have my solder chip bridging the gap. I've got my flux on there. I've got a good seam. This is a uh, lighter for torches. It, it creates a little sh uh, arc right there. And we'll use this to light our torches. So okay. clockwise to shut it off. So I'm going to open it about a quarter turn, and I'm going to put the tip right in there, and I'm just going to push down on the edge, and that lights the torch. The hottest part of the flame is this tip of the cone right here. Right out here, uh, it's okay. Uh, so I got the solder pick in my good hand. The other thing is, uh, you don't want to hold the torch straight up and down it'll choke itself off. So you want to just keep it at about a 45 degree angle, somewhere in the 30 to 60 range. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of soak the metal with heat. So I'm just going to kind of go around it. And you can see now that, that flux is dried out and it's kind of a white powder. Once I get the metal to a, a pretty decent heat, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move in closer and I'm going to go back and forth fairly slowly across that seam. You don't want to put the heat right on the solder chip. What you actually want to do is you want to heat up the metal around the solder chip. And there it, it went to both sides. Use the solder chip, chip to push that around a little bit. And I'm done. 
And now, this is kind of interesting. I'm going to use the copper tongs to pick it up. You can see where the, ox uh, where the flux was, the metal is still clean. But where I didn't put it, it's all oxidized. And the real test of a good seam is if you can see the solder on the inside of the seam, that means you got it right. Now, what I want to do is uh, quickly get it over there into the flux, or I'm sorry, into this, uh, the uh, Sparex. And what this does is this takes off uh, as much of that fire scale as it can. Really important, only non-ferrous metal goes into this. And what I mean by that is copper, brass, silver, nickel, silver, steel can never go in here. And the reason for that is uh, if you put steel in this, it will copper plate if there's copper in here. So if I have my, if I have my uh, ring here and there's copper in this brass alloy, which there is, and then somebody came along and put their sterling silver piece in there, and I reached in with steel, it will pull the copper ions off of that and it will copper plate their project. Um, so it's really important that the only thing that goes in here is non-ferrous metal, copper, brass, uh, nickel silver. Uh, or sterling silver, but no steel. So I'll pull this out, and you can see now that that acid has pulled off a lot of that uh, uh, fire scale. And here's my seam. There's the copper, I'm sorry, there's the uh, solder that flew ac across, and then you can see it on the inside of the seam. And that's a good solder right there. 